Hello guys and welcome back to another video. So today we will be talking about StarCraft 2 and the community feedback post that Blizzard posted on January 27th of 2017. Now, in this post, they are changing the Liberators from 85 damage to 75 damage, which is a pretty big nerf, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then most interestingly, they also posted a bunch of changes that they want to push to the test map. And I thought it was important to talk about at least one of these. Now, the two that I'm not going to talk about, because the topic of today is going to be Terran versus Brothers, is changing Hydra Health from 80 to 90 and changing Interceptor Cost from 10 to 15. Now, these are important changes, but they don't necessarily have that big an influence on TVP. And for, for today, we'll just leave those out and focus on TVP since that has kind of been the whole topic for at least most of this patch that we are, have coming up and most of this um, balance map. Now, I'm not saying that PVC is without its issues, but I'll let someone that actually plays PVC professionally be the one to talk about those. So the other change uh, that was posted was changing the widow mines from plus 35 single target to plus 20 and plus 40 splash to plus 25 um, both against shields specifically um this is a really big nerf and frankly quite a terrible one but i think we have to look a little bit about what was tvp before what is the state now and what is the state going to be if these changes actually go live so Looking at TVP uh, and going back, um, I think it's without a question, without any doubt, that Protoss was the dominant race in the matchup for a really long time. The reason was for that was just the Adepts were too good. They were too strong early. They were limiting the builds Terran could do too heavily. And even when you did uh, builds that were very heavily designed to stop Adepts, you would still die a lot of the time. And it was really, really oppressive. At the beginning of 2016, which is over a year ago now, uh, Blizzard posted a balance update which nerfed the adepts from free shotting or two shotting marines to free shotting marines, which really changed the early game math of how strong adepts were and how much they could do uh, to marines without combat shield. So, following that in that era, I think it's pretty safe to say that TVP was overall reasonably balanced. There are definitely times when one race won more than the other different map pools different metas and if you just consider the nature of legacy of the void in general it is a game of hard counters so when you win you tend to win by landslides and when you lose it feels terrible because you don't have the right unit set to actually fight unit x y or c because you don't have the correct counter um moving away from the hard counter system is probably a good thing and some of these changes definitely are trying to move away from it which i think is pretty good with the premise that 2016 uh overall in tvp was relatively balanced it changed a decent amount in patch 3.8 which came out uh middle to late of november of 2016 like last year and we've had it for a little bit over two months now the patch brought about a bunch of changes, and I think for looking at TVP, there are three major ones that we should probably talk about. Um, the first one was that the Adept Shade Vision was nerfed from 9 range to 2, which basically gave the early game Terran much more safety, because committing to the Adept all-ins or Adept Harass was just harder. You needed more vision to be able to perfectly make the sessions and it definitely left room for some errors there. So some of the early game added pressure died down a bit, which opened the door for the Terran to be a little bit more streamlined in their build because you didn't need to take anti adept defense into consideration as much as uh, you did before the patch. Most importantly though, I think was that the tank was significantly buffed which made some of the early game tank pushes stronger and the Tempest were significantly nerfed, making them more supply and taking away a big chunk of their air to ground uh, capabilities. So if we were to look at a classic TVP game in 2016, um, both players would expand. The Protoss would expand slightly faster than the Terran uh, with more greed because the Terran had to still be somewhat afraid of early game pushes. 
into a mid game where Terran tries to take the initiative the best they can and combining the mobility of bio with mines to zone they would slowly start adding in liberators into the army until there eventually is some kind of push onto one of the proto spaces with liberators um and the game comes down to does the protoss have the time and the economy to get out tempest to hold or don't they and it was very much so this do you have it or don't you because as soon as the Terran had Liberator range and a decent amount of Liberators on the field, if you did not have Tempest, you were not killing the army. But if you have enough Tempest, the Terran is suddenly not killing you and you're heavily favored to win. So understanding that that was the normal way the matchup played out, then how did this patch change it? For one, the tank pushes are really strong and it pigeonholes the pros into playing specific builds that can hold them. Now, being pigeonholed into a certain type of build to hold something that might or might not be coming is definitely a way that can lead to imbalance in the matchup. And I think that most people will say that the tank pushes are probably too oppressive in the limitation of, of builds because they aren't impossible to hold. You just have to do very specific things to hold them. And if those tank pushes aren't happening and you're doing your build to counter it and the Terran is doing something else, you are in a bad spot. And that's true enough. So I think changing um, the speed of the tank pushes or the strength of the tank pushes is an okay place to be. Now the second big change, which or the second big issue, which is not often talked about, is because Protoss opens up in general less greedy than before, and the Terran actually has more safety to do things, we get into this funny spot where by the time the Terran attacks with the ranged Liberators armies, there is in general not Tempest out on the field, and it's something you need to fight this very binary do you have it or you don't counter game. Um, and it's something where when you looked at the second issue, you need to either slow down when Liberator range pushes can happen, or you need to speed up the speed of when you can get Tempest on the field. There is still the alternative route of changing the hard counter system, but you do need to make a significant amount of changes and the ones we're getting now is probably not the right ones in a vacuum or in isolation, but it could be part of a solution. We'll just come back to that in a second when we talk more about the Liberator. Because before we really talk about the Liberator changes, I think it's important to understand that when you are going to change something in TVP to fix these two specific issues, early tank pushes and Tempest transitions, you have to be careful that you don't change the rest too much. Now, changing things in the mid game can certainly help the Tempest transition issue, but if you get the tank pushes to a point in the meta where Protoss can reliably hold it doing relatively normal builds and the tank pushes fade, you can't leave Terran in a state where they are actually weaker than Protoss. And if you think about the times during 2016 where our um, our premise is that it's relatively balanced. If you get it to a point now where the tank pushes don't occur, but you nerf the mines and the liberators, you're suddenly playing the same game as 2016, only the Terran mid game and late game armies are significantly weaker because the majority of the damage output in mid to late game Terran versus Protoss comes from liberators and mines protecting them. The bio does obviously does a ton of damage, but the bio doesn't function without all the support units being a big part of the damage. So you have to be really careful not targeting that area of Terran, which is exactly what this patch does. Now, the Liberator one is clever. The mine one is not. The reason why nerfing the mines specifically in this manner is bad has kind of two main reasons. One of them is the mines are really important for early game defense against air units. Very specifically, people have pointed out the Oracle, and I feel like that's a little bit of a topic in itself. But just very briefly, I'll say is like the main thing that makes the mine important is that it comes out at a time where you really don't have that many units, and it's very unrealistic getting out uh, six Marines in two locations, which is what you need to defend an Oracle. Uh, so the mine produces way faster and is there way faster, and it gives you a, a chance to kill the Oracle. Good players will almost never lose the Oracle to Marines and Turrets, which makes it an almost risk-free harassment, 
and having that harassment and just a free chance to pick up kills over and over and over is probably not that good. It's nice that there is some counterplay and some risk to doing this. So you can keep the harassment a little bit in check and make it a thing where it's a strategical choice whether you take this risk instead of just guaranteed damage every single game. The second reason is that as the game progresses and you go into early mid game and mid game battles, the mines are the number one line of defense against mass adepts and mass charge slots. Mass charge slots is not something we see that often because the mines exist. But you have to remember the charge slots were okay in Heart of the Swarm. It was a complete style in itself for Templars. Um, but they are better now in Legacy and Bio is worse. So you actually risk of getting a relationship where charge slots is better than Bio. It doesn't happen because we have mines and to some extent liberators, although not that much. But I think it's something to be very wary of. And we've already seen in past expansions that mass adept can be incredibly strong and it's not particularly fun either. So I think discouraging people from being mass adept to just being a reasonable amount of adepts is probably a good place to be. The liberator one is clever because the change from 85 to 75 means that you will now free shot any gateway unit, zealots, adepts, stalkers, instead of two shot, which is a really big nerf, a really, really big nerf. The interesting thing though, is when you get air upgrades, you get plus five damage per air upgrade. So things suddenly change a bit. With plus one, you start two shotting any adept and sell it. That isn't plus three armor under a guardian shield, but anything other than that, the math goes to two shot. And with plus two air weapon, you will return to two shotting stalkers as well, unless they are specifically free armor on the guardian shield. The reason why that's important is remember back when we talked about the tempest transition and the speed of the liberator pushes, having the Terran need plus two air upgrade costs money and it takes time, which slows down overall the liberator pushes. Does it slow it down enough? Up for debate. Um, but it definitely has impact where if the Terran does the pushes without the arrow grades, they are weaker and there's more chance that you can actually fight it outside of the hard counter system, which is a good thing. Of course, then you might have to consider is the Terran mid game army strong enough? Probably, but if it's too weak, then you can always look at improving something else in the Terran army, specifically for damage output, not so much for tanking. Um, it's also possible that we could introduce something like a Tempest buff, not in making the Tempest um, more massable or better, because that doesn't really play that well, but you could also make, like, make them less supply, less cost, but much weaker, much lower hit points, the same role as Vikings play. Um, you could make them a little bit more accessible early, like maybe without, I guess without a fleet beacon, it's kind of tough, but you can make like a research on the cyber core that takes a little bit less time so the early Tempest, you know, cheeses are the same, but there are more accessible late game. There are plenty of options of making Tempest a little bit more accessible. So you speed up the time when Protoss can get them specifically to deal with the Liberator pushes. Um, but I think changing the timing is more important than changing the strength of the unit because it affects everything else when you change the strength of the unit and not just that particular part of the dynamic in the matchup, which is specifically when range Liberator pushes happen, the Protoss is like, it's a game game to try and be ready for it. And you don't want to make them immune either. You want to have it so that, you know, with good play, you can get there and with bad play, you don't get there. Before we wrap this up, I didn't read through a lot of the threads talking about this um, community feedback. And there were two specific points that I saw brought up multiple times that I kind of wanted to address. Because while they're interesting, I think they're also wrong for the most part, or at least uh, very erroneous. The first one is the widow mine is able to kill an oracle, which is worth way more resources than widow mine. And come on, that cannot be broken. If you think about it in the game, there are plenty of other units that can kill way more resources for their cost than widow mines. If you want one of the extreme examples, think about three full medevacs full of energy flying harmlessly into a Protoss main with one Templar. He rips everything out of this guy instantly. Should Templars be two and a half thousand minerals? Probably not, right? So it seems like kind of a, a point that doesn't really understand how StarCraft works because there are definitely units that can be more efficient. 
And it has way more to do with what kind of timing are we talking about early on? What kind of infrastructure, what kind of build in terms of what economy you can get, what army you can get later, and all those kind of things that influence whether it's too good or not. It has nothing to do with the resource cost in isolation. The second one's a little bit more interesting, where there is a mild expectation that you can have tanks replace mines as sort of the support units of choice in Terran armies, which doesn't really work that well because if you consider it they are a very interesting duo because they're very good against the counters to the other ones counter in the sense that mines are really good against adepts and charge slots and to some extent organs which are some of them are okay against tanks charge slots are obviously amazing counters against tanks tanks are quite good against blink stalkers and colossus incidentally the two types of units that you want to have against mines you can debate how tanks match up against disruptors my personal opinion is they don't do that well but you know it is what it is so i think it leads to interesting games having both units because they're good against different things which stops one unit from being the de facto best and you have to worry how many do you build? When do you build them? How do you use them in conjunction with the others? And I think it's an interesting dynamic that we would lose should one of the units go and the other one, you know. The other one would have to be better in those scenarios, right? Because if you take away, let's say you take away the mines completely, the tanks would have to be good enough to be able to fight against the charge slot armies, which would make them way better against the others, which would turn the matchup into only charge slot armies against tanks. And that's not really where you want to be either. I think the diversity we have now is good. To summarize it all up, I think a direction of balance where we move away from hard counters would be a good thing. The liberated change we have now is definitely a good thing. You have to be careful when you make these changes that you don't directly influence the overall strength of the army. Thus, if you heavily nerf the units that require hard counters, something else must be better in return. And that's not exactly where we are now, but this could be the first step on the way. With the widow mine change, I personally think it's horrendous because it really destabilizes the builds early on, and it also leads to being able to mass up certain types of units that really won't have a proper counter in what's left. Also, it's the combination of both changing the liberator and changing the mine. Is if the goal is to affect the tank pushes then do something that affects the tank pushes and doesn't affect the rest of the game. Because if you end up in a game where the tank pushes are not really a thing anymore because it was nerfed, in the current suggestions, we will just end up in a mid game where the Terran army is just straight up weaker than what it was before. And it wasn't um, broken before. So something else would have to be buffed. Maybe that's the thought. Maybe that's what we'll see later down the road. But just this in isolation probably wouldn't work. Again, uh, the problematic points were early tank pushes and Tempest transitions. And I would really like to see changes going forward that affect the timing of either the counters or um, the timings, but not so much the strength of the units when it affects other phases of the game, which is what we currently have. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you found it um I was going to say helpful, but I guess just thoughtful, since this is already just a debate. And I hope I will see you again next time. Bye, guys.